Are we through the banking crisis at this point? Or, well, we're not through we with not? bank failures. On April 12th, 2023, Warren Buffett delivered his dire prediction about the future of U.S. banks. On April 25th, First Republic Bank stock fell nearly 50% after the bank reported that they had lost $100 billion in deposits. By the time you are watching this video, First Republic Bank might not even exist. To learn from this disaster as an investor, you need to understand why Buffett was confident in his prediction, which requires having a firm understanding of how banks make money and FDIC insurance. Banks make money by lending out the money in your account. Your share of the profit is your bank account's interest rate. Average people will be satisfied with getting 0.01% from Bank of America or Chase. Financially savvy people will park their money in a high yield savings account, getting anywhere from 3.5 to 4.5%. Every bank has some money in it, but not anywhere close to enough to cover everyone's deposits. This is why people will rush to get their money out of the bank if it's going under. They don't want to lose everything. These bank runs reached a fever pitch during the Great Depression. To solve this problem, the Banking Act of 1933 was signed. The government created the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, a government corporation that would insure depositors' bank accounts in the event of bank failure. The banks would pay dues for FDIC insurance, just like how you pay for car insurance. The insurance limit was initially $2,500. The limit these days is $250,000 per bank account type. If your FDIC insured bank fails and you have a quarter of a million dollars in checking and another quarter of a million in savings, you will get all $500,000 back. Now that is very reassuring, unless you have millions of dollars in a bank account. If you have $10 million in checking and $10 million in savings and your bank fails, you get 500 k back your other $19.5 million is gone forever. When Silicon Valley Bank was shut down by regulators on March 10th, 2023, this reality reared its head. For example, Roku had $487 million in Silicon Valley Bank. Roblox had around $150 million. Fortunately for these companies, FDIC announced that they were going to cover everything in Silicon Valley Bank instead of just $250,000 per account type. But coverage beyond $250,000 is not guaranteed for every bank failure. The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank reminded wealthy individuals and corporations that if their bank fails, they could lose millions. Massive amounts of money flowed out of regional banks and into banks like J.P. Morgan Chase and Bank of America. These banks felt too big to fail. While the large banks were soaking up deposits, the regional banks were struggling to stay afloat. First Republic Bank catered to wealthy individuals, many of whom had bank accounts higher than the FDIC insurance limit. These are the clients that were pulling $100 billion out of First Republic Bank. When Warren Buffett gave his prediction on April 12th, many banks had already failed. So why was Warren Buffett confident more banks will fail? Now, some banks were teetering on the edge when Buffett made his prediction, but there was a bigger reason why Buffett is confident. There's a famous saying in the investing world, you don't know who's skinny dipping until the tide goes out. The tide is currently going out since the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates, slowing both inflation and the economy. And the tide is still receding. March's headline inflation was 5%, which is quite a bit higher than the target inflation rate of 2%. But the bigger issue is core inflation, which removes food and energy from the inflation calculation. The Federal Reserve measures their success by core inflation. Core inflation is currently stuck. Over the past year, while inflation fell around 3%, core inflation only fell 1% and is at 5.6% for March. The Federal Reserve still has a lot of work to do, and that is key for Warren Buffett's prediction. As more rate hikes occur, more banks will be caught skinny dipping as clients need their money or want to park their money in a larger bank. Banks that are not properly prepared for the current economic environment will collapse as the tide keeps rolling out. There are several lessons for investors to learn. First, if you have under $250,000 per bank account type in an FDIC insured bank, you'll be completely fine. FDIC insurance will bail you out in the event of your bank failing. If you don't know if your bank is FDIC insured, you should check. Most banks will list it at the bottom of their website. Additionally, the government has a website that lets you check to see which banks are FDIC insured. I've linked this in the description. Second, major companies are not immune from collapsing. First Republic Bank is part of the S&P 500 and was trading above $219 a share during November 2021. First Republic Bank was trading at above $140 a share during February 2023. Two months later, the stock is currently trading around $6 a share. Third, the economic situation in the United States is getting worse. As the Federal Reserve raises interest rates, the economy will continue to slow, more companies will fail, and the stock market might crash. If you don't have your finances in order, now is the time to act. 
it's a lot easier to fix a bad financial situation when the economy is good than in the middle of a recession. Lesson number four. If you have an emergency fund and are not drowning in debt, the potential crash is a stock market sale. Since the Federal Reserve is expecting a mild recession, the market might only be 10-20% to 20 off. That's still significant. During the average person's working life, they will typically only experience 5-6 to six sales in the stock market. You should take advantage of every sale, even a small one. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing for even more content. There's a lot more to come.